Hi, welcome. Can we talk about the sag in menopause? It's a battle I'm currently fighting and it's a matter of health and midlife, so I think it's important to discuss. Chances are, if you're approaching menopause or you've crossed into postmenopause, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The bat wings that seem to have appeared out of nowhere, the jello jiggler legs, or things that are going south against your will. So upsetting. Loss of muscle mass happens to all of us when hormones shift, but there are things we can do to improve it and keep our muscles healthy and our bodies strong. Let's start with why this happens in the first place. Hormonal changes alter your metabolism, which affect how your body burns fat and builds muscle. There are estrogen receptors in your muscles, and estrogen helps them function and increases the collagen content of connective tissue. When estrogen drops, collagen drops, and it's much harder to build and maintain muscle. And the bones, cartilage, and connective tissue that support the muscles weaken. The result? Trying not to wave too excitedly in a t-shirt. I poke fun because a sense of humor amidst all of the menopausal chaos keeps me going. But it's actually quite upsetting, at least to me. And loss of muscle mass is not health promoting. I've been on a bit of a health journey over the last several months, and those of you who are following my journey know that I have had some success losing the resistant menopause weight that's been stuck to me for years. But the menopause sag is a different story. Toning up and increasing muscle mass has been challenging for me, and I've had to reassess and change my exercise to focus primarily on building muscle and strength while keeping cortisol levels down so that my weight loss continues. So nothing over the top, gentle strength training. I'll keep you posted on my progress like I do with most things in my meno life. The most obvious ones are to replace the lost estrogen and collagen. Not every woman has the option of HRT, but if you're one of the lucky ones that can try it, it's worth a go. Most women, however, can use collagen but they're not all created equal, so make sure to invest in a quality supplement. Liquid collagen is the most beneficial to me. It's helped decrease my discomforts and several of my symptoms, so I know it's effective. If you don't see any improvements with one collagen, please choose another. Protein is also important. As we age, our bodies use protein less efficiently, and it is vital for building and maintaining muscle and keeping strong in midlife so it's never been more important to pay attention to your protein intake. There's a lot of debate over the optimal amount of protein in midlife. I see ranges from 0.8 grams all the way up to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight. That equates to 49 to 123 grams a day for me personally. There's a big difference between 49 grams and 123 grams. And honestly, 123 grams seems excessive to me. I aim for about 70 grams a day. Please don't knock yourself out trying to get in ridiculous amounts of protein. Just do your best to get adequate protein daily. Next is exercise. Using muscle builds muscle. Strength training creates a new demand on your muscles and forces them to become stronger. This typically involves weights or bands, but things like planks, squats, Walking and cycling build strength too. The best exercise is the one that you're going to do consistently. So pick something you love and go at your own pace. Vitamin D is important for a list of things in midlife and muscle health seems to be one of them. There is a relationship between bone mass and muscle mass. Loss of muscle mass affects bone health. And I would assume the opposite may also be true. And vitamin D is a must for healthy bones. All women in midlife should have their vitamin D checked at least once and supplement to maintain adequate levels. I'm sure I don't have to tell you how important sleep is to physical health, but I'm reminding you anyway. Without sleep, exercise doesn't have an optimal effect. Sleep gives your body time to recover, repair, and rebuild muscles. It's also needed to repair, rejuvenate, and recharge the rest of the body. So although sleep is a real challenge in menopause, do your best to make it a priority. It sure seems as if we're fighting an uphill battle when it comes to improving all of the unwanted changes that menopause gifts us with, but it is doable. I'm going to keep working on my weight loss and toning up 
and I will share all of my progress with you along the way. If you've been successful at toning up in menopause, share what you're doing in the comments. I'm interested. I wish you all health, happiness, peace of body and mind, and success on your health journeys in midlife, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.